Alright, another friction example. I've got a pin connection on just a, a beam coming out here. So it's going to look something like a, a pin roller type connection that we often see. This is just basically a, a, a very simple braking problem, like as in brakes similar to what are on your, your car wheels. Um, same principle, that's a, it's a little more complicated. That's a little more complicated than what I'm drawing here. What I'm drawing here is uh, we're just going to take like a little motor, like a little electric motor. This is a motor. So an electric motor is going to be this little cylinder. It's going to have a couple of loops on it. You hook up wires to these loops if it's an electric motor, and that's going to you hook up wires to a battery or a power supply, and that causes the motor to turn. Then, so we're going to say that this is a very simple little brake bar of 12 inch bar. We'll call this point A, we'll call the, where those two meet, we'll call that B, and the wheel is gonna call C. And the wheel has a diameter of six inches. And the problem is gonna say something like the, the motor produces 300 foot-pounds or pound-feet of torque. Torque is akin to moment for us, essentially the same thing. If the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.3, we're going to apply a force P out here at point B. Force P, push. If this is our coefficient of friction, determine P needed, the push force needed to keep the wheel from moving. So you'll see a lot of brake type problems. Apply some force to cause the, the wheel to stop rotating. Um, <clears throat> So let's let's analyze this. So what are we looking at here? Well, often in these brake type problems, you're going to have two different components. You're going to have the wheel or whatever's rotating, and you're going to have the object that's the brake object trying to prevent the rotation. And you're often going to want to draw free body diagrams of each of those, analyze those independently. Now, you could analyze the whole thing, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the wheel first and look just at the wheel first okay now so if I do that this is point C I've removed the motor we're just looking at this point C we're going to pretend that it's attached with just a simple pin um, when I do that that means that I'm going to have a CX and a CY. And then the motor, we said, is producing a certain amount of torque on this wheel. That's going to be equal to 300 pound feet or foot pounds. It's given in the problem statement. So that's what the motor is imparting on this wheel. Now, what I have right here is at point B, I've got a rough connection, a rough contact between B and, C, and the wheel C. So this is, it's a horizontal arm as it's drawn there so it's going to it's going to apply a perpendicular normal force vertical in this case b if i draw the rotation in this direction now they didn't specify count clockwise or counterclockwise so I'm, i just picked one and mathematically it's going to be the same no matter which direction it goes um, so let's say it's going this way it's going this way so that means right here at the slip point, right here at the slip point, um, the wheel's trying to slide in a clockwise fashion. That means the friction force needs to oppose that. The friction force actually needs to be opposing the motion. So I'm gonna draw a friction force there. And if we look at distances here, it's a six inch wheel so the radius is three inches, which um, if you like, let's just call that a quarter foot. 
0.25 feet. One fourth of a foot. Three inches, three divided by 12 is one quarter, quarter foot. Sum forces in the x direction. So apply equilibrium. You should be able to do this. Feel free to pause here. I'm going to work through it though. If you want to work through it on your own, mute me and work through this and then come back and see how we did. That's okay. But I'm going to go ahead and work through it here. Um, equal to zero. I've got CX minus friction in the B direction. Sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero. I've got CY uh, minus that normal force B, just B. And then sum of moments, we're just going to take them about point C. Uh, let's see, I've got uh, CX and CY have all passed through point C, so no moments caused there. Uh, B also passes through point C, no moment caused there. I do have this friction force causing a counterclockwise moment, so that's FB at a distance of 0.25 feet. And then I've got a negative 300 pound foot torque being applied by the motor. So the friction has to be the sole force counteracting that moment caused by the motor. Okay, so hopefully you're coming back now or go ahead and solve out. Right? Uh, that friction at B has to be um, basically four times that 300 is going to be 1,200 pound-feet is going to be the friction force. Well, if that's the friction force, and that tells me then that uh, um, force B. Now, you could go ahead and solve for CX and CY here. Uh, I don't know that we're going to need them. Let's, let's see how we do here. And also, we're going to say if that friction B is equal to the max friction, which means it's equal to mu sub s times B. Well, that means if mu sub s is up here given at point 3, so that tells me then that B is going to come out to 4,000 pounds. Again, using point 0.3, and I've got F there, so 4,000 pounds so far. Okay. Now, if I look at, what am I looking for? I'm looking for P. Where does P occur? P is applied to this beam here. Okay, so if P is applied to that beam there, let's look at the beam. Let's look at free body diagram of AB then. Do I need CX and CY? I don't think so, but let's... Let's look at AB here and see if I've got everything I need to know at that point. So if I just look at AB and I look at the forces applied to AB, well, I've got a pin here at A. That's easy, AX, AY. I've got a rough point of contact here. Now, let me remember, we said back a few lectures ago, we said that um, you've got, we got spam. Uh, this is what we're looking at here. If I've got a single point of contact, I've got the brake drum on one side, I've got the beam on the other, you've got a normal force and a friction force resisting the sliding motion. So that's what we're looking at in this case. And, so, uh, and we've already drawn, remember we've drawn it in one direction back here. Right? I've already drawn it in one direction back here. So I'm going to draw a B going up this time. And since I've drawn FB in the negative x direction, I need to draw the equal and opposite of it there. And what else is applied to beam AB? We'll think about everywhere that force is being applied. I've got a pin here that we've taken care of that. I've got a point of contact right here, so I've taken care of that. And I've got this force P. I might have a weight of the beam I might need to add in here. They didn't give me that information. If it's a uniform rod, I'll just put the weight right there in the middle and apply whatever it is but I do need to also apply this force P. So always be thinking about what, what are the things applying force to this? Have I accounted for all of them? Now, do I have as many equations as I have unknowns here? Yeah, actually I do. I could solve the whole thing. The problem didn't ask me about AX and AY, so I'm, not, I'm actually not so worried about those. I think I can just simply say, if I take the sum of moments about point A, okay, assuming this beam is thin and I don't have to worry about this you know, there is a distance between right here in the middle where point A is and this friction at point B. There's a very small distance there, assuming that 
that distance d there, and if we say if d is negligible, basically, and if we're saying d is essentially negligible, then what I've got is I've got b uh, applying a counterclockwise moment, b at a distance of 12 inches, or one foot, if you like, and I've got force P applying a clockwise motion out of the lever arm of one foot. And assuming that there's not much kind of spinning torque, so to speak here, uh, that this is a very thin beam, negligible thick, then P is equal to B, in which we've already found a value for B. It's up here, 4,000 pounds. So to get this thing to stop, now that's a pretty big motor. Um, I don't. I don't work with motors enough to tell you how many horsepower it's going to take at a six inch wheel to get that kind of torque. <clears throat> it also depends on how fast it's spinning. And that's another thing, we don't know that information. That's a dynamics problem when we get into that. But for us, we're just looking at, okay, if we need to stop this thing, or if we want to hold it from spinning, if we want to keep it from spinning, how much force do I have to apply? Well, given that amount of torque and, so given this amount of torque, this amount of friction in a six inch wheel. <clears throat> and this amount of torque, this amount of friction in a six inch wheel. This is the amount of force required to hold that thing from spinning. That's a good example. Let's stop there and we'll start another one.